Okay. I usually don't like talking about myself this way, but um, since you've asked, okay. I'm Erwin Schusset. It was my idea to put together this collection of Sun Ra Exotica, because I think Sun Ra is a, an excellent exponent of exotica music, and to me it's one of the most relaxing ways to listen to Sun Ra's catalog. And I'm a long-time radio personality on WFMU. I also manage the estate of Raymond Scott, and I am the administrator for Sun Ra LLC, who are the heirs and rights holders of Sun Ra's music. Um, I administer the rights for the master recordings and the publishing that Sun Ra left behind, a huge, sprawling catalog. I also do this for the estate of uh, Raymond Scott, a pioneer of electronic music. I also put together the Langley School's Music Project. That was a whole lot of fun. And I represent the estate of artist Jim Flora, who did album cover art for Columbia in the 1940s and RCA Victor in the 1950s. And uh, I sometimes take some of Jim Flora's rarely seen fine art and adapt it for album covers. It's been on a number of Raymond Scott album covers. It's been on some Sun Ra album covers, including the Sun Ra at Intermedia Arts 1991 album that Modern Harmonic released. I'm also involved with Drew Friedman, the great caricaturist and illustrator. I am trying to reissue the strange outsider scat singing of Shuby Taylor, the human horn. I work with uh, and have for over 40 years the um, king of DIY home recording, R. Stevie Moore, who has hundreds of incredible recordings in his catalog. And I have been credited with coining the phrase outsider music because I don't really know anybody who used it before I did in the sense that I use it. Outsider art, of course, existed and, and it had a category and had an application. There was outsider art, there was outsider literature, outsider film, outsider sculpture, outsider painting. But for some reason, outsider music had been overlooked. It was music that struck me as something a little odd about it, something off, but not intentionally so. It wasn't an attempt to be funny or to be outlandish. These were things which had an organic quality about them. That's what I sort of codified as outsider music in my book, Songs in the Key of Z, The Curious Universe of Outsider Music. Back in the early 1980s, a friend of mine named Byron Werner, who's an artist, was uh, circulating cassettes of what he called space age bachelor pad music. And this music had always been dismissed by later generations. They, it was kind of things that you could find these records for 25 cents in, in record stores. And as I like to say, they weren't in the bin, they were under the bin. And I was skeptical, like many people, but Byron was a great evangelist for space age bachelor pad music. And it didn't take long to convince me that there was tremendous value and art in this music. And I became a fan of Bob Thompson and Henri Rene and Russ Garcia and Martin Denny and Arthur Lyman, and in particular, uh, a Mexican band leader who had migrated to uh, Hollywood, where he led a very explosive big band, and his name was Juan Garcia Esquivel. I was collecting these uh, vinyl records back in the 1980s, all these Esquivel records, and they were all scuffed because whoever owned them previously really loved them, obviously. And uh, this is before the era of uh, digital cleanup. And I loved hearing these records so much and playing them on the radio. But I was also thinking, it'd be nice to get these back on the market because there is a market for them. And right now, the market's not being served. So I pitched it to a number of indies, no, no takers. And finally, I brought it to Bar None Records based in my hometown of Hoboken, New Jersey. They said, well, okay, we'll take a chance. So they licensed it from BMG. This was for a compilation which we called Space Age Bachelor Pad Music. The phrase exotica was coming into currency. It had been around back in the 1950s and 60s to describe music like Martin Denny and Arthur Lyman and Les Baxter, uh, sort of the, the South Pacific strain of uh, 
space age bachelor pad. Not actually in the space age, but more on the islands in the South Pacific. I just love the uh, the gentle percussion and strings and keyboard and bird calls uh -huh. in this music. To me, it was very evocative. Uh, evocative of uh, a tiki bar, but hey, why not? A tiki bar is uh, a nice place to while away a few hours. So I'm a fan of this music and was collecting it over the years. I had a huge collection of uh, this exotic of vinyl, space age, bachelor pad music, space age pop, whatever you want to call it. A very broad category, not one kind of music. Many different strains, many different influences, uh, many different ways of interpreting uh, Tin Pan Alley standards or uh, approaching music from a very uh, modernistic standpoint. But when I began administering Sun Ra LLC, which is the heirs of Sun Ra, and listening to the music very closely to prepare it for digital reissue, I heard a lot of what I considered exotica. It was, it was quite obvious to me. The percussion, the rhythms, uh, just the, the, the atmosphere of this music, I began to think, Sun Ra created quite a body of work that could easily be categorized as exotica. But when you talk about the avatars of exotica music, Sun Ra's name never comes up. Although I have found that a lot of people who love Space Age bachelor pad music also happened to be Sun Ra fans. So I was setting aside in a spreadsheet the titles that I realized fit in uh, the Exotica genre. And I also began to think, I really would love to put together an Exotica compilation, a Sun Ra Exotica compilation, to, to, for a number of reasons. And the first one is the selfish one. I get to hear them all, really cleanly restored, on vinyl or CD, and uh, it's a nice, solid, exotica program that all happens to be Sun Ra. Two things I really love, Sun Ra and exotica. And, but then I thought, I'd also like to make the case to the market, to the collectors, to the fans out there, to the historians, to the exotica scholars, that Sun Ra belongs. He is in the pocket. So I ended up with a list of, I think, about 25 titles. And it was enough to fill three 12-inch vinyl sides, two CDs, and that's where we have Sun Ra Exotica on the modern harmonic label. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's supposed to pr provide what could serve as a background, but of course, because it's Sun Ra, can serve equally well in the foreground, meaning you can listen to it. But of course, I've always felt about Exotica is that it should never be purely background music. There was always something interesting going on. It's there. It can mix in with the sound of uh, cocktail glasses, but uh, it's just great music, and it does create a wonderful mood. Now, I wrote the liner notes for this package, but I really wanted someone who had more musicological chops than me to also uh, try to take a shot at summing up Sun Ra's contribution to the exotica genre. And I found the perfect person. That's Brother Cleve. He's a fabulous musician. He used to play with the Del Fuegos. He was a founding member of Combustible Edison. But Cleve's a smart guy, and not only does he know Exotica, but he's also a huge Sun Ra fan. And he's a good writer, and he turned in just, uh, just a splendid set of liner notes that goes deep into the music that's in this collection. I talk more about the Exotica genre and how Sun Ra fits in, and talk, of course, about Sonny's history, and about Sonny's affection for the music of Les Baxter. So having tied all that in, I then had Cleve write about the music itself, the, the individual tracks, Sonny's piano playing, his arrangements, what members of the orchestra are playing, and sort of give a musician's insider look at what's going on in these exotic recordings. 
It's uh, great working with Modern Harmonic as a partner label because they're very receptive to uh, ideas. Uh, I wasn't even originally going to pitch Sun Ra Records to uh, Sunday's parent company of Modern Harmonic because I didn't know that Bob Irwin was a huge Sun Ra fan. But when he found out I was administering the estate, he flipped and got me on the phone and, and said, please, 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 with three pleases if I would uh, allow them to license some Sun Ra material. So it's been great working with Modern Harmonic because the packaging is great. They uh, are very meticulous about spelling, punctuation. They make sure that the M dashes, the N dashes, and the hyphens are all appropriate. They make sure that the quotes go outside the period, and they use proper uh, pagination, and uh, everything is proofread several times by actual human beings who know the English language. And I'm impressed with how detail-oriented these packages are. They look great, they read great, and needless to say, the music that's in them sounds great.